Morning, 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 everybody. How you doing? Welcome back to the Spurs Talk Show. I am Sean Butler, but the one you came to see is right there. She's looking at me impatiently because I've got this in my hand. So once we finish the walk and talk, which won't be a long one, then we'll be in there throwing the ball until her little heart's content. Nice day for it. How are you, though? I hope you're happy and healthy doing the things you love. Please do me a favor, guys. Smash the like button for me on the video, as you always do. Hit the subscribe on the channel if you haven't already. 17,000 and nearly 300 people have gone before you. Welcome back to all of them. Welcome to the new. Hit the notification bell and drop a comment. Let me know your thoughts on today's topic. And today's topic, guys, it's very early to be doing this in the season. It's not even the middle of September officially. I think it is actually officially the middle of September. But there's a transfer story out there for January that I really like the sound of. And it's coming from a Spanish outlet, a Spanish sports outlet called Fajacious. I'm not sure how you actually pronounce it. And look, they, they get some wrong, but they also get some right. And they were first on a couple of big transfers um, over the last year and a half. So their reputation in the tier category is going up. And but they were the first to put this out there and it's, it's been shared amongst all the aggregators. And we'll see, it's worth talking about on an otherwise dry day, but apologies if you want your shameless stories to be transfer based only during transfer windows. <laughs> I have got another video for you coming out later on today that will hopefully be a Sheffield United preview, hopefully with actually a Sheffield United fan channel, uh, if I can organize that, but otherwise I'll have another video either way to keep the uh, cobwebs away. Let's talk about this player though. His name is Mikel Marino. He is a Real Sociedad. I don't know whether you call him a DM, a six or a box to box. He sort of plays as a double pivot for Sociedad. Um, but a brilliant player. Really, really good player. You might remember him from Newcastle. About four or five years ago, he played for Newcastle. He's played 160 odd games now for Sociedad. I think he's got about 40 goal contributions, 13 goals. 27 assists something like that he's a big straw a big tall strong guy six foot two basically wins like everything in the air scores a lot of goals uh, from set pieces he's a very dangerous set piece player and a really brilliant wide-ranging passer the only real criticism that I have of him is about his speed he's not very fast He's a big guy, so he's not like as mobile as people like Pape Sar or people like Basuma, but he offers other things. And here's the kind of lowdown on him anyway. The rumor in the story is that we're going to end up losing Hoybier in January. Bugsy, leave the cows alone, please. Come on. Cows can't play with you. Um, we're going to be losing Hoybier in all likelihood. We might also be losing Lo Celso. And so we're gonna to need to replace a midfielder that can do a variety of different roles. Versatility is the name of the game again. And this player certainly is versatile because you could definitely play him. He's very protective um, you know, for a system like what we play where everybody can find themselves right at the top end of the pitch. You need that monster number six type of player that I've spoken about so frequently. And obviously Basuma's doing a wonderful job at the moment this guy is brilliant at tackling brilliant at interceptions brilliant at recovering the ball but like i say the, o the only thing that niggles me about his suitability is whether or not his mobility would be an issue in a world where he's not playing with a guy right next to him but you do have a guy next to you in the inverted fallback system so maybe it's maybe it's not such an issue as I'm making out. As I said, he's brilliant in the air. I'll put all the stats up so you can see it on the screen. I might even see if I can squeeze in a clip or two if I can find a way to disguise it. Um, look, for me, I think the players come on leaps and bounds. I remember him a couple of years ago when he was like 23. He's 27 now, so maybe a bit, bit longer. And there was, there was a bit more criticism about him then. The criticism then was that whilst he is a brilliant, sort of could become a brilliant box-to-box -box midfielder. His passing range is superb. 
that unfortunately back then at least he didn't face the press very well he would always get dispossessed if two men were pressing him in the midfield his distribution his pass would be wayward he didn't have the confidence with his kind of slower feet to dribble his way through the press and so ultimately if you were playing against teams that were likely to press the midfield then often his teammates wouldn't look to him to receive the pass as frequently as some of the other players around him because of their experience with him struggling in that environment to make the right decision. So I don't believe that that is anywhere, anything like the case anymore. I think he has really improved his game. And I think that's one of the things you like to see from people that are 23, 24 to 27 is ultimately development and progress within the same team, within the same system. Sociedad do play a very kind of progressive, attack-minded, philosoph you know, philosophical style of football. And his game has just come on leaps and bounds. And you know, a lot of people are sometimes guilty of thinking that if you haven't got it by 23 or 24, then you're probably not going to have it by 27. But he is someone that I think has really ironed out the inefficiencies in his game. Another thing that, if you were to look at the stats from four years ago, and I have, you would see that his decision-making in terms of trying to recover the ball sometimes was poor. He'd give away a lot of fouls unnecessarily trying to dispossess players when the probability of success was minimal. And the danger of the player keeping the ball was also minimal. So unnecessary recklessness that would give away fouls that would lead to goals. And it was quite a frustrating endeavour. You know, this that sort of um, yeah, recklessness, I guess. Naivete in his game doesn't happen anymore. He picks his battles and he is one of the highest rated um, tacklers per game in his position across all five leagues in terms of the amount, the frequency and the, and the percentage of success. So this is a guy that gets better with age, like a fine wine. At 27, does he fit Tottenham's mould? Maybe, maybe not. I don't know necessarily. I was making this point yesterday about a centre-back as well. I don't necessarily know whether Tottenham have to stick to this youth-centric model for every single decision. I think we have now a very young nucleus. I don't think you need to necessarily have to look for another 21-year-old you know, for a central midfield replacement for Pierre Mahoybier. I think that signing a 27-year-old isn't necessarily an issue, as long as Ange thinks this guy fits the bill. He reminds me of like a Xavi Alonso, a little bit of like an Adrian Rabio as well, kind of player in there with his passing range and his, his sort of strength and physicality. Um, like I say, the only thing I wonder about is whether or not his mobility is, he's not like, I'm, I'm, I keep focusing on it like he's a snail, he's not. I just think whenever I see him, he looks like he's he just look just doesn't doesn't you know doesn't look like he's got quick feet and can get get about as quickly as the players that we have and I think that our system probably has a higher requirement for um, yeah for, for for mobility in the transition. It's my only really concern about him because he's got a great sweet left foot on him. He's got a sweet right foot. He can shoot. He scores goals. He defends well. He. His passing range is brilliant, progressive carries, progressive passes is up there with the top sort of 10-15% of, of midfielders generally, even though he's tasked more as a, as a, as a DCM or a DM. It's an interesting one. He's got a buyout clause of 60 million euros. His contract finishes in 2025. And uh, a lot of clubs are after him. Liverpool were after him in the summer. Chelsea were after him at one point. Uh, I'm sure they don't need him anymore. But... Uh, I'm sure he won't be short of suitors. Sociedad are in fact trying to um, get him to sign a new contract, an extension, to remove that buyout clause. So it might be something that could be triggered. 
And look, like I say, like I've been saying, the inflation in the market, 60 million euros is about 50 million quid, give or take. What do you get for 50 million pound these days? Conor Gallagher or Mikel Marino, different types of players, but for me, Marino is a far better, far more well-rounded player. 50 million pound gets you a Brennan Johnson, who is a player that Ange likes and has lots of potential, but hasn't really shown to me or to most of us where the valuation comes from, unless you're thinking it's mainly for homegrown. So 50 million pound doesn't really touch the sides anymore because of this crazy financial side of football that we find ourselves in. Saudi Arabia has rewritten the kind of rule book on on what prices look like in a variety of different ways and mechanisms. Liveramento, 40 million pound right back that's played the grand total of about six months of football because of injuries. Kai Havertz, 70. Mason Mount, 70. You know, what would Basuma be worth this summer right now if the window was still open and Tottenham were willing to sell? 90, 100? I don't know. It's crazy. And so for me, 50 million euros or 50 million pound for a player like Michael Marino, or Mikel Marino, sorry, is uh, it's an interesting one. Let me know if you have watched him. Do you think that his skill set suits the system? Who would he come in to compete with? Would he be competing alongside Basuma? Would he be competing with Bentoncourt? Do you even think that maybe there's an argument that, B that Basuma won't be the six when Bentoncourt comes back? Do you think Bentoncourt could play that role? Or do you bring in someone who is more of that kind of monster that we've always, always been speaking about, that defensive guy that can allow more fluidity from the fullbacks to get forward? Maybe you don't need both of them inverting all the time if you have someone that is an out-and-out -out defensive midfielder who has that broad range of passing like Marino does. Tactical diversity, tactical versatility, all that stuff, all those trigger words. I don't know, Marino for me is interesting. I really like the player. Just not a fan of his, uh, of his speed numbers. Let me know there, guys. Like, subscribe, and comment. And as always, bye-bye.